Now, the city of Felsmere was actually, work was actually begun on February 22nd, 1911. So hence, we are celebrating the 100th anniversary. It was also platted and recorded in July 31st of 1911 in St. Lucie County. This was St. Lucie County from 1905 to 1925. 1925, it became India River County. It became Indian River County because in Vero Beach they were showing movies on Sunday and they were shut down by the authorities in Fort Pierce and they didn't like that so they wanted to watch their movies on Sunday so hence we have Indian River County, the north 23 miles of what was formerly St. Lucie County. Now all the roads here, this is the main artery here east-west through Felsmere. This was known as Pennsylvania Avenue and in, in fact if you continue on the dirt road down there, that's Pennsylvania Avenue. It went straight east-west. County Road 512, that was developed by the state. Actually, it was State Road 512, then it was turned over to Indian River County. That veers to the southwest and goes out to where Sun Ag is. Actually, Lateral U, which was one of the first drainage canals, that was, uh, it was 12 miles long. It went about half a mile from State Road 60 all the way up to the main canal which is on the, on the borderline of Indy River County and Brevard County. All the streets that you see here, east-west, are named after states. All the streets that are north-south are named after trees. This is the main north-south street, Broadway. Contrary to what people think, it's not Broadway Street, it is Broadway, it's been planted with Broadway. It's a 100-foot right-of-way, which was quite progressive in those days to have such a wide right-of-way. There were sidewalks here in the city of Felsmere uh, through the Felsmere Farms Company actually constructed six miles of concrete sidewalk, which was unheard of then in Indian River County. It had the first paved streets in Indian River County through a bond issue. In 1916, they paved Broadway, they paved New York, and they paved South Carolina Avenue. The reason why is most of your development in residential areas I'll explain why later. This was a much wider landscape median, but as cars grew wider and they needed more uh, width for parking cars and, and cars and trucks coming down, the median shrunk. They used to have it landscaped, but for reasons of safety, you don't want workers out there being hit on you, you lose more city workers that way, it's kind of hard to replace them. So they made the city made this all brick medium, except for the, the trees that you have. Um, the building we're approaching, we'll go into later, that's Marsh Landing, that was the Felsmere Estates Corporation, actually built by Louis Gold, who was a, a very wealthy developer and builder out of New York City. He came down and purchased uh, about 100 square miles. The Felsmere, uh, the Fels uh, bought, uh, that's Ann and he, Nelson Fell, bought 180 square miles on March 11, 1910 cost of a dollar 35 an acre very good bargain so this predates this by five years now on this site the town photographer Corky and I have determined that this was the Broadway in the windows and doors match everything it was also extended that little window in the top was the bathroom and when they first built this in about 1910 1911 to go to the bathroom involved putting your shoes on and going out in the back course you know nothing's changed and <laughs> lofty ideas and wise execution you can see that the Felsmere Tribune reported that at a February 1915 meeting in the Dixie Theater and the Dixie Theater stood on this spot over here it was two stories that held at least 500 people they oh. showed the first silent movies here yeah. in Indian River County it was brought in by train and then you also had town meetings here you also voted in the Dixie Theater so at one of the meetings, they decided that they would go ahead and incorporate the city. This is about four years after the city was started work. So it was 1950. And the charter that included this unique proposal that women be granted full and equal rights for voting in municipal elections, which was unheard of at the time. It was the first city south of the Mason-Dixon line, first city in Florida. Mason-Dixon line being between Pennsylvania and, and Maryland. I think it was the last time I thought it was there, anyhow. Uh, so up north they were a little more progressive, but down in the south they really treated women as second-class citizens. The Fells, um, I think it was 1893, Allison, Joe, 1893 in New Zealand, 
where the fells came from, they granted women suffrage. So naturally those thoughts were conveyed over here. And what happened was they buried it in the charter and true to form, just no change from the state legislature, they didn't read it. So what did they do? They passed it. Little did they realize they passed something historic right here. So the National uh, Organization of Women now, as you can see on the bottom, uh, erected this and, uh, historic plaque saying that Governor Park Trammell at the time unknowingly gave women the right to vote in municipal elections. Now this is what happens, men, when you take your wife to a town <laughs> meeting and they are standing alongside of you and the proposal is made. I don't think you have much of a choice. All you suffer the dire consequences. So uh, the first woman, Zena Dreyer, she was the uh, wife of the director of sales for the Felsmere Farms Company here because there was a sales office in Chattanooga, Tennessee. There was a sales office in New York. There was salespeople all over this, uh, the country. But the whole sales office in Chattanooga, led by William Dreyer, came down in around 1913 in January. So Zena Dreyer was the first woman to cast the vote and then you can see here that Felsmere started reaching out to other communities and saying, look, we gave women the right to vote, why don't you? And it was about five years later that finally that you had the, uh, the 19th Amendment, that's the Constitutional Amendment, that granted suffrage to women. But Felsmere led the way in the South. So I, I know the women had to see that. It's not a powder room or anything like that.